Well, the Federal Aviation Administration has approved the nation's first ever fully auto automated commercial drone flights. Now companies will be allowed to operate drones without on-site operators. So what does exactly mean for the future of flying unmanned aircraft? Want to bring in Dragonfly CEO Cameron Shell. Cameron, the dawn of the drone is here. So how soon will we see these drones just routinely delivering stuff to our homes? And by the way, how would it exactly work? Sure. Thanks, Charles, for having me back. We really appreciate it. As you know, uh, Dragonfly is uh, a publicly traded company, DFLYF. That's DFLYF as our symbol. And we're the oldest commercial drone company in the world. And what we're seeing unfold today is like nothing that we've seen in the last 20 years. The age of the drone really has arrived. And inside of the next few years, we will start to see uh, commercial drone or retail drone usage to the home of packages. But inside of the next year, what's even more important is that we will see drone usage for vaccine delivery, for medical equipment delivery, and for first responder delivery, the really critical things that make a difference in our life. So now, of course, there are worries about drones beyond these commercial uses, which people are going to have to get used to. Uh, we know police departments early uh, on during the pandemic were criticized for actually using some of your drones. I think there were two police departments that were going to use them to, for, for different things. Uh, so then, you know, there was a ton of controversy. And then we see also how drones are being used in, in, in uh, physical conflict and sort of skirmishes around the world. And. Uh, you know, a lot of worries about enormous civilian casualties. So it's not all going to be smooth sailing, no pun intended for drones, is it? Well, it never is. But the reality is when you see a drone that's able to be the first first responder at an accident scene or at a disaster zone, actually able to take the vital signs just by using the cameras of the, uh, the victims or of the uh, injured um, people on the ground and able to direct the other first responders into that uh, area or to be able to deliver emergency medical, equi medical equipment or vaccines into challenged locations. You know, like anything, we have to weigh the pros and the cons. But these applications alone are what's really driving the drone business forward. No, there's no doubt there's an explosion of it. You know, it's so funny because Amazon throughout uh, the last few years and when they were developing their own drone program seemed to completely ignore all critics that said the government would never allow it. Uh, it is here. It's going to happen. It's going to be explosive. Uh, I would assume, I guess, then the, the industry is saying, hey, it's not going to be the drones. It's going to be the governments like the Chinese government, for instance, that employ these things, whether or not they're abused then. Well, the ROI on using a drone is just so prolific. You know, if you think about reforesting, you know, a patch of land, or if you think about uh, taking agricultural data to understand water tables or how to prevent forest fires, or if you think about first responder situations, or if you think about, you know, just any situation where you've got to put people in the way, and now you've got a drone that can effectively do that business, you know, it, the, the ROI, right. not just from a safety perspective, but from an economic perspective, right. they're just too telling to ignore.